the X-Star EP9. Let's check it out. The X-Star EP9, uh, this is a budget-friendly little pistol caliber carbine. Uh, it is in the carbine length of 16-inch barrel. They do make pistols, and honestly, this is a very light, handy option, but it's all polymer. Uh, to be honest, uh, I had not taken a second look at the X-Star EP9. Uh, they do make it in 45 as well, and they have a number of configurations, but you know, it's just one of those little pistol caliber carbines, and there's a bunch of them out there. Uh, not until Graham Bates, uh, who's a good friend of mine, has a great YouTube channel, he recommended this highly. In fact, he said, you really need to take a look at this. And so XTAR sent one of the EP9s for us to review. Uh, we took it out to the range. I, I'm going to tell you guys, I was surprised, very surprised. Uh, and so we're going to take a look at it. This is, you know, well under $500. And so it's a very reasonable price for this little carbine. It's a lot of fun to shoot. And the recoil is just different. Uh, and it's really more soft shooting. So while this is an all polymer, really lightweight, inexpensive option, this thing has a lot of great features. And we want to give a big thank you to XTAR for sending the EP9 9mm carbine for this review. What do you think? That's fun. It's not so much in my shoulder, and even though it is a little bouncy up here, it's very controllable. It seems to be all in that area instead yeah. of recoiling. It's kind of it's different. Yeah, but it, it feels like I have more control over it than if it was all back here in my shoulder. Right, and it's so lightweight. Yeah, oh, so lightweight, and it's just really nice. Guys, before we get started with the tabletop itself, um, it is so light. You know, it is all polymer, and I'll just be honest, I really was hesitant uh, when I looked at this, uh, but Graham Bates over at GB Guns, great channel by the way, uh, really highly recommended this. I started doing some research, and there's a lot of people that are saying good things about this rifle or this carbine. Now, it started out as a handgun um, or a pistol, a number of different configurations. Uh, they make them in 9mm and in 45 ACP. But we really wanted to get the carbine, uh, especially with some of the crazy stuff going on with the pistols. We just thought this would be a, a more stable review. One of the things about this rifle, though, is that it has a mass-delayed blowback. Blowbacks typically have more recoil to your shoulder. Um, and, of course, it's that bolt bounce as well. And we'll take a look at it when we open this up. But this is a super soft shooting carbine. Uh, in fact, I was very pleased with it. Most of the recoil is here in the center uh, of the receiver. It's not really on your shoulder. And so it gives it a totally different feel to it. Uh, one of the other things is that you order this directly from XTAR. You know, you don't go through dealers, so that really helps bring down the price. Um, these are under $500, so, you know, it's a very reasonable option. Um, something great for home defense, something great just to take out to the range. Um, even those with limited shooting experience, it's just a great gun. It just doesn't have that recoil. Um, so we're going to take a good look at a lot of the details, and there's some pretty cool features about the EP9. Now, X-Star firearms are made in Lake Havasu City, Arizona, so all made in the USA. They source all the materials, and so this is designed and produced, again, right in the USA. They really got their start making polymer parts for rifles. In fact, they were the first to come up with the first polymer receiver. So they have a lot of expertise in working with polymer already, and of course, obviously, this gun is mainly polymer. 
the bolt, of course, black nitrided, the barrel black nitrided. Uh, that's all steel. Uh, we'll get a better look at it when we open up the hood. Now we're going to make sure the gun's unloaded. Magazine's empty. Uh, we do have a side charging handle. And so we're going to bring that back and the gun is empty. Uh, this is a reciprocating charging handle, so as it's firing, this will go back and forth. Uh, the good thing is, it's up high enough to where you're not going to have your hand in the way. And this is made of polymer as well. 8-inch handguard has a lot of texturing right here. I mean, it's very grippy, but not uncomfortable. M-lock accessory rails right here. And of course, we have Picatinny all the way down the rail and all the way down the top of the receiver. Uh, you notice that it is a little tall in this area, and this is to house the, the mass bolt or their dynamic mass bolt that goes in here. Uh, it actually delays the action, and it makes it just softer shooting. The barrel, 16.25 inches, and it is black nitrided. It does have half by 28 threads. One thing that I really thought was interesting is the thread protector just fits over it. It doesn't actually screw on. The funny thing is, this never came off and we shot over 500 rounds at the range. In fact, it didn't even come loose. So it's really, I don't know what it is, but it just sticks to those threads. So while the barrel is thin, when it goes out towards the muzzle, as you can see under the handguard, it's a much thicker barrel. Now here you can see the barrel nut. And the handguard just fits right up next to it, but that gives a lot of surface to connect with the bolt and the bolt carrier. Shell deflector right here, and we have our mag release. And of course, this is designed for the Glock pattern magazines. But it does come with an 18 round Glock compatible magazine. Uh, and this is made by X-Star. It's a very lightweight magazine. And I think these are like three for 30 bucks. But it was funny because a lot of times these aftermarket mags, they're iffy as far as reliability. And we had no malfunctions with this mag. Uh, we have our Glock mags. Now this is the Glock 19 mag. You can see where it comes. Uh, I tried the Glock 26, it wouldn't quite fit. And it had a little bit of an extra base pad, so a standard mag may fit. But <clears throat> they do come out <clears throat> pretty quickly. And so they are definitely drop free. Then of course, your standard 17 round mag and any of your Glock mags. Uh, of course, you know, the larger mags will go in there as well. There's a little bit of a bevel here at the front of the mag well and the back. Trigger guard is very ample. I mean, it's large for gloved hands. And the grip, this is compatible with any of your AR-15 grips. I do like, again, this texturing. It's the same texturing that's on the handguard. Uh, these are produced by X-Star. Uh, but it has a very solid feel to it. Smooth on the front, smooth on the back, but it does have that little lip to be able to give you a little more leverage gripping the grip. Of course, there's no charging handle, so you just have this area that slopes up right up to the Picatinny rail. And our end cap, right here, uh, which, you know, it has a polymer buffer tube. And it, it does have some pattern on it. And I'm not really sure if this is compatible with your standard buffer tube, but I have a feeling that it is. And then also right here, we have a QD port. Included is one of the Mission First Tactical Minimalist Stocks, which is very lightweight. And then we have a rubberized butt pad at the back. Now, when I was getting ready to go to the range, I just threw on one of the mini ACOGs, and this is the 1.5 by 16. These things actually are pretty incredible little optics. Defense scope mount, this is a QD mount, so it's real easy to attach. But you can put any kind of optic on here, but this really worked out well. Now, here on the other side, you have your standard safety selector, uh, which is AR-15 compatible. You have your bolt stop or bolt release. Again, this is AR-15 compatible. And your trigger pack is also AR-15. So a lot of the parts inside are your standard mil-spec type parts. And the charging handle comes back really smooth. But man, you can tell that this is polymer. I mean, honestly, when I first got it, I was kind of messing with it and I thought, boy, this is gonna be interesting. But it turned out to be very interesting. I mean, this thing just ran like a top. Now, of course, Smith & Wesson just introduced their response. Uh, very similar in a lot of ways, all polymer construction, uh, definitely has some different features to it, especially with the interchangeable mag well. Uh, you can use your standard Smith & Wesson M&P mags. Has the M&P style grip, has a flat face trigger. And you have your rear charging handle rather than the side charging handle of the EP9. We had a lot of fun shooting this one. I mean, it's just a great rifle. Smith & Wesson quality, and I mean, it's well known. Uh, the retail price though is, is $799. Now, obviously, you know, market price is gonna be considerably less, but that just gives you an idea between the two. While they have a lot of similarities, 
uh, you know, you're going to get the, the EP9 for considerably less money. And honestly, with the dynamic mass blowback, <laughs> I mean, it shoots really soft, even softer than the response, which the response is a great rifle. Now we have a mil spec trigger, uh, definitely AR-15 compatible. And we're just going to try the trigger action. I mean, it has a very little bit of take up. And, you know, you have your standard mil spec brake. Reset right there. Trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge and brown ales. Six pounds. Six pounds, 1.4 ounces. Weight on the EP9 without the optic is 5.25 pounds. Big thank you to Fioki for sponsoring the ammo. All made in the USA. One of the biggest suppliers of ammunition in the country. Also, again, we really thank Lula Loaders. We go through a lot of mag loading here, and this really makes it easy. The XTAR EP9. This thing is so lightweight, it's phenomenal, honestly. It's just a feather. Uh, it's all polymer. It's got the AR-15 controls, but it's in 9mm, takes Glock mags. Uh, it does have a side charging handle, which makes it definitely different. Threaded barrel, so it makes it really easy to, you know, put on a suppressor. But it's got all the same controls as your AR-15. And guys, the recoil is in the center here. It's, it's really a different experience, but I like it. Smooth shooting does come up just a little bit, but I don't know. I've got to look at this. I haven't even gone through the gun yet. There is something about the way this thing recoils that makes it so easy. But again, guys, super lightweight, nice collapsible stock, adjustable. Got on my little Trigicon, uh, little mini ACOG. Just a nice shooting little gun. Of course, you know, we're just using the 17 rounders. This is one that comes with the gun, but it's been flawless. We've been using Glock mags. I wouldn't necessarily pick this up, but uh, a good buddy of mine recommended this, and it's just been a lot of fun. Now for disassembly, of course we have our takedown pin right here. We're going to push it out. Uh, with the polymer, it's a little bit tight. Then you want to just pull your barrel assembly off like this. Uh, you'll notice this hook on this end. So this is a little different than your pivot pin. Just has a little place right here to hook into it. Then of course it fits. And that has a lot to do with this little area right here. Now with the trigger and the hammer, I mean, these are all AR-15 compatible, so that makes it really nice to be able to switch out to, you know, a competition trigger or whatever you want to do, match trigger. Uh, here at the back with the buffer and buffer spring. Uh, this is actually retained a little differently, and so you just push in your buffer, and then this little plate comes out. There we go. And you want to make sure you hold on to that buffer because you don't want it to come out. We want to make sure our hammer is in the down position because it does restrict the buffer. So we're going to bring this out. Be careful, this thing will come flying out. Uh, this is one more buffer. I mean, it is heavy. You can see the end. Uh, this is part of their recoil reducing system, and it actually eliminates bolt bounce. Uh, and then we have our spring that comes right out. And we have our ejector right here, which is typical for your 9mm hat comes up. Now take your charging handle and just push out, and your bolt comes out to about right here, and then we just pull the charging handle out. <clears throat> I mean, this is some more bolt system. Again, this has had added weight to it just to allow this to have softer recoil. It delays the bolt coming back. They call this the dynamic mass bolt. And here you can see the bolt face. It's really built up. Now the bolt, if you push it back and lift up, it'll come out. And here you have a spring system. 
It just gives that a little bit of delay, and this also is part of the system, is that little bit of a spring. Here is your firing pin retainer pin, and you push it out from the other side, and it just comes out. The firing pin just sprung out, and it is spring-loaded. Um, and so this really keeps from slam fires. Uh, a lot of 9 millimeters will do this with the spring. Now here's the barrel extension, and I mean, it is really beefy in this whole area. And so your bolt's going to meet up to this. It's going to give it some strength. And here is the hook that fits into the, your receiver in place of the pivot pin. One thing I did notice is we have this cotter pin right here, and this does hold in your extractor. So if you want to change that out, you can just pull this out. But otherwise, we're going to go ahead and reassemble. So first thing we want to do is put in our firing pin. Make sure that it gets in there. Now I can barely get my finger in there to push the firing pin down. You just want to look to see when it's clear to put in your retainer pin. And then you release it, it's going to hold that into place. Next we're going to take our dynamic mass bolt and you want to go in spring first and just rest it in that little channel, just like that. Put our bolt back into the upper receiver. Uh, one thing they recommend is not running this wet. Uh, it is self-lubricating between the polymer and the steel and it doesn't really need a lot of lubrication. But you want to make sure that you keep this hole right here toward the back. Take your charging handle and you see this little ledge at the bottom. You want to make sure that that actually fits on the other side of this little raised area because that's what retains it. So we're going to push it in and it's good to go. We're going to put in our recoil spring and our buffer and once we get it all the way back we're going to take our plate and we're just going to drop it into place just like that. Now when you put in your buffer retainer plate you want the little nub that sticks out to go toward the buffer. Uh, if you don't, you won't be able to reassemble it. It'll go in both ways, by the way, so you want to make sure that it is going toward the buffer. Now you want to bring this over almost straight in, uh, and the reason why you have that hook at the front and you have this hood at the back. Once we get it into place, just kind of lock it down, and then we're going to put back in our takedown pan. Test for function, and we're back in business. Again, the price on the XTAR EP9 is $499. Uh, you order it factory direct, and that really cuts down on the middleman. It keeps the price really low. So some pros and cons. First, price. I mean, it's a great price uh, for a rifle uh, in 9mm PCC carbine. It's super lightweight. That's a big plus. Uh, the dynamic mass bolt recoiling system, delay blowback, is definitely uh, easier on the shoulder. In fact, it's very little on the shoulder. Most of your recoil is right in this area. It does have your side charging handle, which is really cool. Uh, to me, you know, putting the charging handle back here, it's a little more awkward, but you know, I've gotten used to it, but this just makes it faster. It's got mil-spec AR-15 parts. You can change out the grip, the trigger, whatever you want to. It does have M-lock accessories, and it does have monolithic Picatinny rail. Barrel's black nitrided, the gun is very accurate, mission first tactical, minimalist stock. I mean, it's got a lot of cool features to it. What are the cons? Uh, it's polymer, you know, and it's all polymer here. Uh, is this a go-to-war gun? No. I mean, I, I wouldn't run this out because, you know, there is more possibility. You know, if you're out in the woods or you're running around, you know, this could break. Uh, is it a great home defense gun? Sure. I mean, it's lightweight, it's very handy, very pointable, and the recoil is very light. It's Glock mag compatible, that's a huge plus, and the EP9 mags work really well, and they're very reasonable. The reliability was stellar, and guys, just to kind of research this rifle, I looked at a number of different reviews, and there was a lot of positive on this gun. And again, I really want to thank GB Guns uh, for the recommendation. I think this was a great choice, and it's just a lot of fun. This is something, especially for new shooters, it makes it great. And being so lightweight, it makes it easier for even the young or those that are small of stature to be able to shoot. So overall, honestly, I'm very impressed with this, and I really didn't think I would be. So guys, pistol caliber carbine that's very lightweight, fun to shoot, very inexpensive, and yet has a lot of good quality to it. I'll tell you, when Chris from Honest Outlaw did a great review of this, I knew that it was going to be a lot of fun. And a big thank you to Graham Bates for recommending me check this out and to XTAR for sending the EP9 for this review. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.
it has all your AR-15 controls and it's just super lightweight. Well, that maintains it or retains it. Okay. Let's do it again because it sucked. My input is $50 per sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it. Oh, look, we weren't recording. Oh, darn. So we bring it out. Woo. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we got our hammer forward so we can bring that buffer out. Shoot that comment. <laughs> Woo! It's coming out, baby. It's coming out. That's all, folks. That's all, folks. <laughs>